As the pair walked through the woods, the shimmering stars seemed more distant than before, eager to make room for the culmination of this darkest of nights. Is the world getting brighter outside the forest? The creature wondered as the pair watched the sky through the tree's canopies. Is it actually becoming daylight? That would be wonderful. I've been in perpetual night. All right, let's activate the water statue. This should be the last statue. How many have I activated? Let's see. Um, is it the fourth one? Is it the third or the fourth one? Not certain. Ah, it's a draug, or however you pronounce that. I've heard that name before. Did they appear in the Witcher series? I'm trying to remember. I don't know, I know I've seen them before. A draug was once a man who, after passing from this world, turned into a being consumed by its hunger for all that it once had. Approaching its perceived property carries with it great risks, as stories tell of Draugr, whose grotesque appearance leaves the victim's mind in disarray, causing them to wander the woods aimlessly as they slowly transform into Draugr themselves. So I'm gonna say it's a safe bet that going for the ring or maybe the flowers underneath this hand is probably a bad idea. Hello? Are you down there? Could you perhaps let us look at the flower on the ground? It might be something very helpful to us. The creature tried, but the arm remained. The large arm was greedily warding off the small creature's attempt to grab the delicate-looking plant. It's another totem. A totem, crudely decorated with bone carvings and various symbols, had been struck into the ground, steadied by a pile of rubble. Another one of those strange things. I wonder why they were put here. The creature pondered, while the Alva seemed to appreciate the odd craftsmanship. As they approached it, the Alva's eyes fixed on a particular part of the totem. Do you like this one? The creature asked, removing the blunt piece of flint from the totem. Hmm. Flint and tinder. I guess that's what I needed to start a fire. I was thinking I could just put the tinder down and then just use the flame. The flame rune. But apparently not. An iron chain had been fastened to a pole at the edge of the woods, dwindling down into the darkness below the cliff's edge. Is that chaining the draug here? Is it chained up? I think it is. The post must be buried very deep in the ground to be able to hold something like that. The creature thought to itself as it glanced down the cliff. The creature rustled the chain and soon after a fierce snarl echoed from the darkness below. I could let it go, but... What would be the point? It's protective of its property, right? So why would it even want to leave? I don't think I can do anything about it right now, anyway. Wait, did that actually work? What, what did I just do? Wait, what? How did... I was thinking I could maybe pry it, or something, but apparently I just stuck it in the top. Why? What am I making? Hmm. I don't even know what that's for. I 
That's weird. There's no description for the white flower. There's no anything for the white flower. Hmm. Copper blade. Wait a minute, hold on, go back. Copper blade, don't I already have one? Yeah. Oh, I'm gonna make scissors, aren't I? Yeah. There are two halves of, a sc of scissors. The creature didn't have any trouble pulling the thin blade from the moist soil. All right, what do you do with scissors? You cut stuff. But what stuff? Hmm. I have, I mean, surely that couldn't cut through the chain, right? Hmm. No. The woods ended abruptly as parts of the ground had at some point plummeted into the darkness below. The creature peeked across the edge of the cliff, but the starlight didn't quite make its way to the bottom. I can't see what's below us, although I don't think I can get us down there safely anyway, the creature said while shaking its tiny head. The creature said, while shaking its tiny head. That was a nice little rhyme. Probably unintentional. Okay, so what do I cut? I could cut the plants, I suppose, herbs. With a quick snip of the scissors, the large plant fell down in the creature's hand. As it looked down at the plant, the once strong glow emanating from it was beginning to fade away. I killed it. Of course, I mean, I cut it. What else would happen? But still, it's sad. Which is a numbing agent. Which, if I gave it to the ancient tree, perhaps it could make some sort of a numbing agent that I could use. Suddenly, the alva fell from the creature's ear, luckily caught by a pair of frantic hands grabbing after her. The strange power present in the forest seemed to take its toll on her already fragile body. Aww. And perhaps I can numb the drog's hand and then take the flowers and it won't notice. This one looks good, but I'd need another ingredient to complete the mixture for you. The ancient tree said as he inspected the plant. Hmm. What else do I need? Hmm. Nope. Hmm. Nope. Hmm. Nope. Hmm. Nope. Hmm. Nope. Hmm. Nope. Hmm. And nope. Okay. I don't have it. Well, let's try to start a fire. Hmm. Wait, what? <laughs> Apparently you don't use the flint and tinder on the fireplace that is not active. What do you use it on then? Seems pretty logical to me. Bloom and plant. You bloody, bloody plant. Alright, what else could I cut? Uh, actually, nothing, because my scissors are gone. Apparently they were used up by cutting this blooming plant. Alright, well let me check the statues. So that's one, and that's two.
He's... I mean, that's a gravestone. That's not really the fourth one, is it? No. So, no, I haven't activated four. I've only done three. Hmm. What am I supposed to do with this wooden post? That now has a gigantic thing stuck in it. Actually, wait a minute. Wait a minute! Is that going to attract lightning? Hold on, do I need to do this? Or... This? Or this? Wait a minute. Which ones do I need for lightning? I feel like I need a certain combination active for lightning. Like, maybe what I just did affected the weather. Because I don't hear lightning anymore. Or thunder. You don't hear lightning, you hear thunder. What if I turn off this one? Air. You. That's not the one I meant to press. What if I turn that one off, but turn this one on? I don't know, I don't hear the... I don't hear the thunder anymore. Which is strange. Right, I can hear it in the distance when I do that. So if I wanted it to hit here, what would I do? I don't know. I don't know if I'm even supposed to do this. I can't see what else this gigantic iron pipe or whatever the hell I put in there. I can't see what other use it would have. Go ahead and ch check the walkthrough on this one. Alright, the Gate of Promise. We're actually pretty close to the end of the game, actually, looking at this. Mm-hmm. Go to the cliff. Pick up the flint. Use the air rune to trigger thunder. Mm-hmm. Combine the iron bar and copper wire into a lightning rod. Okay, so you are supposed to make a lightning rod. Wait, how the hell is a copper wire going to help with that? Really? That's what... I just needed, like, an extra foot of copper wire and that was it? Okay. Come on. Come on. Okay, now what? Oh, there we go. <laughs> I think it worked. Oh god, it's free. Is it going to come back? As the drowg fled into the woods below, the creature was able to move a bit closer to the cliff's edge. In its escape, a ring had fallen from the drowg's finger, now glimmering in the darkness. The creature held it in its palm while they observed it. It almost appeared as if it had somehow been affected by the power of the sky's lightning. 
the gem decorating it clearly reflecting the star's light, almost amplifying their glow. Reflecting ring. Hmm. Oh, this must be the other ingredient. With the recent departure of the Draug, the white plant was lying exposed on the ground. Isn't this one the prettiest we've seen so far? The creature asked the Alva, who responded with a slow nod as her eyes lingered on the plant. The creature marveled at the beautiful plant as it slowly extended its tiny hand to pick it up. Come with me, pretty, pretty plant. Herbal ingredients. Okay, well, I know that the plant should... Uh, the glowing... The glowing plant should cause some sort of a numbing agent, but... I have no idea what the white flower is going to do, so what am I going to actually make? I don't know. Let's find out. How about these? The creature asked as it presented the herbs to the tree. Perfect. These would mix well. One moment, my friends. The ancient tree cleared his throat before continuing to chew both plants into a thick salve. After chewing for a good while, he continued. There you are. I hope this will aid you in some way. Be careful with it, though. This turned out to be a very potent mixture. Excellent. Numbing salve. Okay, well, I'm obviously not using it on the draug. So what do I use it on? Perhaps the... the sow? The gigantic evil red-eyed sow? Sow? Sow. Sow. It doesn't even say... It doesn't even sound right when I say it now. Sow. It just sounds like a noise. Hmm. I seriously do have a lot of... A lot of... Bling. I've got like a gold cup and like a gold necklace and what looks like a gold ring or maybe copper. Whatever they are. I want to bling you out, Totem. Actually, I should probably activate you again. Oh, wrong one again. This is the one I meant to do. In fact, just in case that's very important, which it probably is, I should make sure the other ones are activated as well. Is this one still on? Yeah, okay. Okay. Now do I make a fire? Hmm. Apparently not. Maybe I just put it on the meat? Yes! Spiked meat. Okay, I guess it's already cooked. Tasty, doesn't it? The creature presented the haunch of meat before Glosen's frightening jaws. The gluttonous sow quickly sunk her teeth into the smelly flesh, instantly devouring sinew and bone alike. Not satisfied by the meal, she once more turned her attention towards the small creature fidgeting before her. G good wasn't it? The small creature tried as her jaws opened. Then, her expression changed, the hungry mouth turning into a wide yawn as she proceeded to rest her head against the moss-covered stone. Go to sleep. There you go. As she fell into a deep slumber, the thorns emanating from her body retracted from the clearing. The creature smiled its hands still trembling. We're getting close. I can feel it.
Hmm. As the pair arrived at the deepest part of the forest, an unnerving silence instilled itself in the clearing. Unbeknownst to them, they had arrived at the Copper Gate, a lost doorway to the oldest of mountains, rumored to contain treasures long since hidden from the eyes of men. As they stood there, the faint wind carried with it soft-spoken whispers in a strange tongue throughout the woods, spreading a sense of unease to plant and animal alike. Ooh, it's the fourth statue. I guess it's probably going to activate when I do. Wait a minute. I can't. I can't use the fire statue. I can't use the fire rune. That's strange. A chisel had been left firmly stuck in the soil. What's this sticking up from the ground? Do you think we can pull it out? The creature asked the Alva, who didn't appear to share the creature's sudden curiosity. The creature reached out with its dainty little hand and pulled out the chisel almost falling over as it stumbled backwards to regain its balance from the effort. Now I'm really curious what this flint and tinder's for. of branches had fallen down from one of the spruce trees surrounding the clearing. What are you doing on the ground? You should be up there. The small creature thought as it looked up into the thick web of branches. You should be. You don't belong here, branches. I'll take you with me. The creature reached down and picked up the two branches. Maybe I can start a fire. Hmm. I mean, they're probably totally soaked. So I don't know if that would work. A lever. Probably the same description for this one as the others. A statue. Deep. Yeah. A crudely put together lever of wood and bone was standing near the mountain wall. I wonder what will happen if I pull this, the creature said to the Alva as they looked up at the large door in front of them. Only one way to find out. The creature pulled on the lever with all of its strength but only the creaking noise of wood grating against wood could be heard. Hmm. I swear, in the ambient track, I hear someone whistling in the distance, like far, far in the distance. A massive echoing whistle. Yeah. Is definitely there. That's very unsettling. So now they're just whistling in the night. Chisel. Hmm. No. Alright. What's up with this gate? Over the centuries, many have claimed to have seen the Copper Gate, although its shape seems to vary from one tail to the next. And when being asked to show others its location, none seem to recall the path they only recently trod. Hidden away deep in the darkest of forests during a night such as this one, it appears. However, don't let its lackluster appearance fool you, as it is said to have been created long ago to protect the most powerful of magical beings. Hmm. It looks like a puzzle. I think it is going to be a puzzle. This is it! The creature exclaimed. I'm sure we'll find a way to finally get you your wings beyond this gate. 
The small creature touched the coarse stone, feeling a powerful aura emanating through the gate. I just stopped the rain. Whoa. Once again, the creepy rune. Always the creepy rune, all the way on the right. Okay, well... I noticed that this one's lit up, however, it does not have a chain. And that should be this one, I think. Because this one's water and this one's nature, or whatever this rune's called. So maybe I need to go back and disable it? Let's try. Yeah, air. Which is this one, right? Yeah. Let's see what happens. I still can't use fire, though. That seems to be the problem. I can't use my fire rune, and for some reason it doesn't tell me why. It doesn't say why I can't use it. But, uh, yeah, I'm guessing they're all supposed to be activated, and that's the problem. I just need to make sure they are all activated. These are, of course, easy. This one is not. I probably need to make a fire. Hmm... Maybe I put these down first. Hmm. 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 I need to. I need to burn something. Hmm. Hmm. But what? Hmm. Hmm. No. Hmm. Hmm. I still have so much bling. I've got to use it for something. And there's still the unfinished totem. I would finish it, but I don't know how. Reflective ring. Reflective. Oh. <laughs> That's what it needed? Oh, okay. What else? Oh no, it says finished totem. Hmm. As the pair silently beheld the totem, a warm energy began to spread from the boulders surrounding it. The radiant light quickly engulfed the clearing, amplified by the Vitorm's magical skin. Maybe that's all I need to be able to use the fire totem? No, of course it's not that easy, but I do have a reflective ring. Maybe. Hmm. Hmm. Shadowy being? Are you... Are you not going to run away? Oh, it's attracted to it because it's glowy. Right, it's attracted to glowy things. Hello. Why were you following us? The creature whispered, receiving no reaction. What happened in these woods? It tried, this time a bit louder, but still could not get the attention of the strange being. As the shadowy being didn't seem to mind, the creature and Alva decided to borrow the pages and stone fragment hanging from its waist hoping to find some sort of clue regarding the strange place they currently found themselves in. However, as they had a closer look, neither of them were able to make out the words scribbled on the torn pages. Withering pages and a statue piece.
Wait, a statue piece. Is that the problem? Is the fire statue broken? Is it missing a piece? It doesn't look like it. These statues must mean something. The statue. Oh. Oh, After yeah. facing the stone fragment, the creature quickly backed away in response to a loud crackling noise emanating from the statue, lasting but a moment before leaving room for the silence to reinstill itself in the clearing. All right, now we can use it. Great as it is, we are still missing a chain. But let's try the lever again. The creature pulled on the lever. Nope. I think I need the chain. The small creature touched the coarse stone. Feet. Yeah, same as before. I mean, this necklace kind of looks like a chain, but I doubt it's big enough. And anyway, I would need to break it, which I don't seem to have a way to do. Hmm. I still have the flint and tinder. Burn them. Hmm. Burn that. Hmm. Perhaps the tree will know something about the pages. It does seem to be rather wise. Although I think its only expertise might be in herbals. Hmm. No. Hmm. 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 Still can't make a fire? Wait a minute, cracked urn. So when has that been there? As the rain had stopped, the receding water had revealed an old urn at the bottom of the hole. Okay. Hello there, little ones. The creature exclaimed as it noticed two worms emerging through the soil. The creature lifted the wet urn out of the muddy soil. Oh, it's an urn of oil. Hmm. 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 Now I could certainly burn something, but what? Hmm. Actually, no, I don't need to burn something. I could, well, I could try to use it as a lubricant, but I have a feeling it's not stuck. Rather, it's probably because of the missing chain. They should get things moving, the creature said to the Alva as she emptied the contents of the urn onto the lowest parts of the lever. Maybe that is all you need to do. Okay. Yeah, I still need a chain, right? I must. What do I do with these pages? I have no idea. I don't think there's anything over here. I didn't realize that was another passage. I mean, there's a part of a chain, but... The creature's weak arms were unable to pull the chain off of the post. Oh, okay, what about the chisel? Hmm. Hmm. I don't see how anything I have is going to help. Hmm. I 
need it. Duck. None of this is going to help me. Hmm. At least I don't think so. Hmm. No, how could it? The chisel is the only thing that makes any sense at all. Hmm. But even that, what would I do with it exactly? I don't even have a tool to hit it in with. I must be missing something. Actually, wait a minute. I wonder if these symbols correspond to with the symbols on the ancient tree at all. I mean, I already tried to use it on the tree, though. Hmm. Yeah, it's not going to work. It's a gravestone? Hmm. No. I feel like I'm just missing an item in the environment. Let's have a chat with the ancient tree. What I'd give to have some more of those juicy berries. The ancient tree mumbled as the pair took their leave. All right, let's take a look at the walkthrough. Oh, flint and steel. Mm, okay, still though, what? I mean, there's no way that's enough flint to actually, for example, make something uh, melt metal. So I can't imagine I use that on the chain, do I? Hmm. No. Hmm. Okay. So, maybe I can finally, finally use that to start a fire. But then what do I put in the fire? Maybe I heat up the chisel? Yes, thank God, I think I can finally do it. Striking the piece of flint against the horseshoe caused tiny sparks to scatter onto the tinder. As it began to smolder, the creature carefully placed it in the fireplace, igniting the branches. Okay, let's stoke the flames. Or not, apparently it doesn't. Okay, he heat up the chisel, maybe? As the creature held the chisel amongst the coals, the heat caused it to glow red, retaining the intensity of the fire for a short moment before beginning to lose its warmth. I... how am I even carrying that with me? It would burn right through any... any part of my body. Okay. Hmm. I can't even use the cloth as a buffer for my hand. I guess it's gonna be hot enough to melt through the chain? I seriously doubt it would be able to, but... Okay. As the creature held the heated chisel against the base of the chain, the iron slowly began to glow red, allowing it to break the link holding the chain in place. I'm pretty sure that would not even remotely work on multiple levels. That's kind of a roundabout way, wasn't it? 
Oh well. Here we go. Let's try this again. Hmm? 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 Wait, what? Seriously? Oh, do I have to pull on the chains? I didn't even realize I could. Oh, no. It's one of those stupid chain thing... pulley... crap thing. I don't know what the hell... What's the name? What do you call these puzzles? They're very common. You know, just like there's a sliding block puzzle. What do you call these puzzles? I don't... Whatever they are, they're stupid. So, what do I do? Just retract all of them all the way? I usually just brute force them. And usually that actually kind of works. Let's try that. I'm going to brute force it for a minute. Ooh, almost. Oh, so close. So close. <laughs> oh, crap. I find these so dull. They're not, honestly, they're not mentally stimulating at all. They're just... I feel like they're just wastes of time. Alright, so how does this actually behave? So it looks like... How it behaves is that... Whichever ones you control will go down one. Unless they hit the bottom, in which case they'll go all the way back up to the top. Right? One. No, okay, that's not always true. To try to figure out the logic of this would take a long time. Try to memorize exactly what pressing each one does. Hmm. Yeah, we'll be back when I make some progress. And there we go. It only took me like 20 seconds after I cut to do it. Okay, cool. I I hope that's done. Is that what I needed to do? Let's see. Oh, I think it is. I don't get it. What? Hmm. Hmm. They need to be in a certain order, don't they? It's not all the way up or all the way down, is it? But what order do they need to be in? I'm looking at the stuff that has symbols on it, see if, seeing if it gives me a clue. Hold on, there's symbols back here, but I don't think they're really relevant. No, they're totally different from what I have. Hmm. I don't know, maybe it's where they're staring. 
Like this one's staring over to the right. And this one's staring over to the right, and where's this one staring? Like this one's staring to that one, that one's staring to that one. Maybe that's the order? The fire one stares at the water. The water stares at the air statue, and then the air statue stares at... The earth statue? I mean, they're all pointing at each other, but then what's the starting point? They all stare at each other. Yeah, that doesn't tell me what the starting point is. Well... Actually, none of them stare at the fire statue, so maybe the fire statue is the starting point. So it's fire, water, air, earth. Water. Or fue. Fire, water, air, earth. Maybe? I'm going to go with that, and if it doesn't work, I'm going to look at the walkthrough. So I'm guessing fire would need to be... What? All the way at the top? Hold on, how many different levels are there? One, two, three, four. Okay, yeah. So, fire needs to be all the way at the top. Done. Water needs to be next, which is, of course, blue. Okay. And then air needs to be third. Fuck. Hmm. Fire, water, air, earth. That actually might be it. If I solve this, I'm going to be damn proud of myself. And if it doesn't, I'm going to be very annoyed. Come on. Come on. Okay, that one's yellow, that one's white. What is that? Is that good? Ooh, ooh, wait. Wait, what? It was so pretty, and they all had different colors. Apparently it didn't work. Hold on. There's more to this. What I need to know is, does where you put the chain affect what color pops up? So this is popping up with fire when it's on the fourth. It does change. So... There's there's a lot of different ways you could read this. Am I supposed to set it so that whatever color pops up is whatever that color statue is looking at? Like, okay, let's see. So the first one, the first... So, one, chain position one equals air. Four equals fire. So what's two and three? Two is water. So three must be earth. Let me just confirm that. Yeah. Alright. So I've got that. 
and the order on here is Earth. So looking at whatever fire is looking at, we need to find out. Air is looking at something. Water is looking at what? So I'm going to look at what they're looking at. I think that's maybe what I'm supposed to do. So what is Earth looking at? And then we'll set it to the correct one, based on what I just did. So Earth is looking at water, right? Looking down here, looking over here. Yeah, Earth is looking at water. I believe fire's looking at water. Wait, where's fire looking? Yeah, I mean, fire's looking at water, too. Maybe that's okay? It better be, to have repeats. That seems strange, though. Why would there be repeats? Air is looking at... Earth? And water is looking at air. Hmm. Seems strange to have repeats. Okay. So the first one needs to be set to water, which is chain position 2. The second one, which is fire, needs to be set to... Also, water, which is chain position 2, which again seems strange. Um, the third one, which is air, needs to be set to earth, which is chain position 3. And then the fourth one, which is water, needs to be set to A, which is chain position 1. So 2, 2, 3, 1. Let me see if I can make that happen. Two, two, three, one. Ah, crap, it's gonna move. Oh boy. Well, there's gonna be a mess. No. No. Two, two, three, one. It's going to reset. That's never going to work. Oh, God. Am I just chasing, chasing some obscure logic that isn't even true? I feel like I am. Why would there be repeats? Why would you not use all of the chain positions? It seems rather strange. Hmm. obviously not going to work, I just want to see the pretty colors. Maybe I just need to match him. Maybe Earth just needs to be set to Earth. That would actually make more sense. Let's try that. So in that case, they need to be set to... Well, Earth is... Three... Fire is four. Air is one. And then water is two. So three, four, one, two is the chain positions. Oh, God. Three, four, one, two. Three, four. Hmm. Three, four, one, two. Everything's right except this damn air one. I just needed to go back one. Let me press it just for just for the fun of it. Pretty colors. Wrong colors. But they're pretty. Hmm. Hmm.
how the hell do I even... Let me try doing it backwards. I'm just going to set this to 2. Alright, it's at 2. Let me just set this to 1. 4. No, and this one just needs to be 3, which is never going to happen. Mess with them again. And let's try one more time. Going to set this one to 3. 4. One. Two. Well, that didn't work, did it? I... God, I don't know. I'm pretty sure I know what I need to do now, but... How do you go about doing it? Four, one... Oh, actually, three, four, one. Hmm. <sighs> it's always one that's off. Three, four, one, four. Like, I don't... I'm trying to memorize how exa exactly what each one affects would just be almost impossible. The best I can do is just mess with it and then try it again. Four. One. Wait, three? I just did this backwards. I did it backwards backwards. Two. One. Four. Just messing that up, of course. And three. Well, that worked out really well. <gasps> Yay! Three, four. One, two. Yeah, I'm going to be back when I make some progress. Wait, did I actually just do it? I, I think I just did. I don't even know how. I was about to press one of these again. And then I looked at it and I realized, I think I have it. Three, four, one, two. Yeah. How... It was just brute force. I certainly didn't use logic. Hmm? 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 Bingo? Please? Yes. Success. That was a strangely quiet movie. It's practically silent. Whoa! Hi! As the odd pair had moved further into the darkness beyond the copper gate, before the small creature's eyes had adjusted to the shadows, the Alva had suddenly been grabbed from its shoulder. A gigantic shape had picked up the helpless Alva and placed her inside a glass sphere strung up from the ceiling. Three beings slowly emerged from the darkness, who didn't seem at all interested in the small creature standing before them, and appeared to be squabbling with one another. Look at it! Look at it! The fat-nosed troll chanted, enthusiastically pointing at the Alva with one of his chubby fingers. It looks so yummy. Let me chew it a bit and I'll let you two know what it tastes like. The fat-nosed troll made a guttural sound, spouting and drooling saliva as he mustered all his strength in an effort to grab the Alva. But the slim-nosed troll quickly gripped the glass sphere with his long, nimble fingers, keeping it out of the fat-nosed troll's reach. The shiny one is doing fine right here in my ball. I found it. It's mine. Swallowing my shinies will be the last thing you do before I got you like a little fishy. What? Bugger Kangan bellowed, immediately bringing the argument to a halt. I am thinking, he then continued, letting out a troubled sigh. Irritated by being interrupted, 
The slim-nosed troll quickly retorted. Thinking, that's all you do. We have been sitting here for so long. I don't even know why we came to this place. I say we leave and take the shinies with us. Burger Kungan slowly turned his head towards the slim-nosed troll, giving him a dreadful glare. <laughs> the slim-nosed troll responded, with his nose pointing upward. Do what you want then. Search some more. Go ahead. You'll never find it here. Whatever it is you're looking for. I, however, have that which I desire right here. He carried on as he gave the glass sphere a mischievous poke, making the Alva tumble around inside. We have a bit of a problem. There are gigantic trolls that appear to have amassed, well, mounds of gold as it says. Along the chamber walls were mounds of shining gold with shapes ranging from tiny coins to elaborate statuettes, all floating together into a big, shining mass. I take it that these trolls very, very much like shinies. Ooh, leather straps. That'll get me out of this situation. A piece of supple leather was lying across a crack in the floor. Out of curiosity, the creature picked up the strap to have a look at it. Recognizing the fine condition of the leather, it decided to keep it. Yes, yes, this is a fine piece of leather. It's a perfect time to admire leather. When my friend is about to be eaten. It is a nice piece of leather, though. Hmm. Altars. Oh, I was mentioning that I had shinies, I had bling, and they are attracted to shinies, and I have a lot of it. Trolls are hideous beings, frequently described as doers of evil and wicked deeds. Terrified only by the sun's rays and the clap of thunder, they seldom leave the darkness of their caves, but once in a while, emerging to roam the night in small packs, traveling between villages, snatching newborns out of their cribs before replacing them with their own offspring. Although socially organized, their minds are often blunt, some telling stories of quick-witted travelers narrowly escaping their grasp. Okay, so I should be able to outsmart them. The troll's eyes were focused on the Alva, paying no attention to the small creature's presence. Hello. Let her come down to me, please. The small creature tried, receiving no answer from the troll. So their total attention can be gotten by a something that's simply shiny. That's good for me. This will probably the, be the same description, right? Rumored to be the ruler of all his kin, Burger oh. Kungan is the oldest troll known to man. He was birthed long ago, deep beneath the cold earth in halls of ice, in a realm of eternal night. Stories of him have sprung up in generations far parted by time, leaving many convinced as to him possessing the gift of unending life. The few times he has been forced to appear above ground, his sightings have always been preceded by powerful omens, followed by strange mystical effects on the lands. Trolls are hideous, although socially... Okay, so this is the only special troll, basically. Well, let's try to put down some shinies. Doesn't matter which one I put it on. Hmm. Hmm. 
Hmm. Hmm. Can I combine these at all? No. All right, I've got to make something. What am I making? Leather straps, cloth. Hmm. Is there something else on the ground I'm missing? The creature wasn't at all interested in trying to reach the gold. Yeah, I mean, it's not as if I've seen anywhere to spend money. Can I do anything with their feet? No, no. The Alva had been snatched from the small creature's shoulder and was now being toyed with by the trolls, trapped inside the strung-up glass sphere. She doesn't like that. If you don't put it down, I'll be mad. The creature said with a trembling voice, receiving no reaction from the trolls. Dangling high up from a rope, the glass sphere was out of the creature's reach. I... I don't know. Throw it at their faces? Hmm. 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 What am I supposed to do with this stuff? Hmm. I, I don't know. Oh, they can activate. As the creature moved across the chamber, one out of four similar altars carved out of the cave floor seemed to respond to its presence, faint whispers breaking through the silence of the cave. Six remain shrouded, inhabiting the moonless night. Did it just whisper that to me? Also, I've just realized that I totally forgot about my... I totally forgot about my runes. You should probably remember those, they're kind of important. What does this one say? Holiest of all remains the Earth Dweller, ambition stifled by the wheel's light. Well, that clears things up, thank you. As equals two walk beside one another in light, five acknowledge their place. What? On a throne of eight, the golden wheel governs the day. I... Is that somehow relevant to the withering pages? I don't know. Let's try the runes. Woo! You dummy! Of course you'd go and break it! The fat-nosed troll exclaimed. Don't raise your voice to me, you moronic glutton! I found it! I'll break it if I want to! The slim-nosed troll grunted. Enough! Burger Kungan roared. What's done is done. We all get one piece each of this trivial ball. End of discussion. There are more important things to attend to. I should have thought twice before bringing you two along on this expedition. The slim-nosed troll mumbled something inaudible in response, bringing the conflict to an end. Where? Where's the Alpha? Did I kill it? Where did she go? Yeah, it's exactly what I was thinking. One left on the ground. 
the slim-nosed troll had placed his part of the sphere among his other belongings on the floor. There is something special about that piece of glass. The small creature thought to itself. The slim-nosed troll was keeping watch over his treasures, making it hard for the creature to have a closer look. Okay, so I need to distract him. Which I can do by... what? Chinese? Hmm. 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 No. Okay, let's try the other runes. Ew, what the fuck? Why do I have control over the fat-nosed troll throwing up bile? That is not something I want control over. The fat-nosed troll had spat a gruesome mass onto the cave floor. Am I gonna pick that up? How disgusting. The small creature thought to itself as it watched the mucus slowly dissolve. The spit looked to be fairly clear, considering its origin. Wonderful. Sticky leather? Hmm. Oh, whatever. Whoa. Pretty. Once again, it lives up to its name as of being the creepy rune. Cup of bile. Ew! The it actually small worked. The creature bent down and scooped up some of the spit into the cup of Sigrin. Suddenly, the mucus had turned green, and instead of water, now flowed a putrid, endless stream of poison liquid. That is seriously disgusting. A defiled Sigrin's cup. What am I gonna do with that? Combine shinies with it. Hmm. Put it on an altar. Hmm. 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 Apparently not. Hmm. What the hell? Hmm. What do I do with this thing? Hmm. I I don't know what to do with this thing. Six remain shrouded, inhabiting the moonless night. Hmm. I don't know. I have a disgusting cup filled with poisonous bile stuff. And a necklace, and a canvas, and a reflective ring, some withering pages that I can't read, and some leather straps. Hmm. Hmm. I, I don't know, I'm just gonna look at the walkthrough. Alright, what do we do here? Alright, yeah, we are very close to the end. Uh, apparently I can talk to the slim-nosed troll. I guess because they're not distracted anymore? I, I thought they weren't paying any attention to me. I mean, they're obviously not paying attention to me right now. But apparently now I can. The small creature gathered its courage and approached the slim-nosed troll. Hello? It said with uncertainty in its voice. This time, noticing the creature, the troll quickly grasped his dagger. What is this? A filthy little ball of hair straddling towards me. Coming for my shinies, you filthy burglar. Keep your distance, or you'll regret it. The troll licked the blade's edge with a devious smirk on his face. 
the small creature stood, frozen in fear, not able to utter a single word in response. Realizing it posed little threat, the troll settled down and turned to his riches as he started to mumble to himself. Filth! Trying to steal my shinies! Too many to hide from prying eyes! Need something smaller, something pleasant to my eyes, something shiny, yes! Okay, now I present it with something shiny. The necklace or the ring? Let's try the ring. Hmm. Let's try the necklace. Seeing the small creature approach from the corner of his eye, the slim-nosed troll quickly turned and snatched the pendant out of its hand. Ah, I finally found it. I knew a special kind of shiny was round here somewhere. The troll admired the pendant as he twisted and turned it in his hands before addressing the small creature reaching for it. Now, now let's trade, shall we? I get one thing from you, you get one thing from me. The troll took out his dagger, pressing it hard between his hand, causing it to bend into a crescent shape before handing it over to the creature. Without another word, the slim-nosed troll turned away, holding his new prized possession in front of his face, occasionally laughing with glee as he stared into the reflective surface of the pendant. That is a massive bent dagger. It's, it's basically as long as I am tall. I'm amazed I can carry it. Okay, what do I do with that? Hmm. Let's try to talk to the other ones. Actually, wait a minute. Varga Kungan gave it a stern hmm. look as the quivering creature approached him. What a surprise. A strange little newborn has wandered into our mountain all by itself. Why have you come here, little creature? Burger Kangan asked, while curiously inspecting the tiny being standing before him. To help my friend. We have been told this place can give her wings. They are missing, you see. The creature said with determination, gathering all its bravery to not appear weak. Was that the shiny little thing that fell down into the hole? over there. If that's the case, I'm afraid you will never see her again. <laughs> Burger Kungan chuckled, but quickly returned to his stern voice. You said you had heard about this place. Tell me what you know. The creature dared not refuse Burger Kungan's request. Well, that it once held some sort of ancient power. The small creature explained in a slow, tentative manner. Burger Kungan sighed in boredom. Bah! I thought you might be useful, but I suppose it's up to me to figure out the secrets of this place after all. I can't trust these two cretins, and you are no better. Waddle home to where you came from. You will find nothing here, and even if you had, it wouldn't have helped your friend to... What was it? Grow wings? Such stupidity! Burger Kungan. Irritated by the small creature's lack of knowledge, lost interest and returned to examining the cavern. They've been here for an extremely long time, but apparently they don't even understand the place. I was going to say, I think I can pick this up now that the slim-nosed troll is distracted. The mm -hmm. slim-nosed troll was keeping watch over his treasures, making it hard for the Wait. creature to have a closer look. Or not, never mind. Let's have a chat with you. 
As soon as the small creature came before him, the fat-nosed troll's fingers had surrounded its body, pinching and squeezing it. How do you taste, I wonder? The troll said, drooling as he pressed one of his fingers into the small creature's belly. Are you filled with delicious fat? Maybe I could use your bones to pick my teeth with. The troll was not gentle in his examination as he started to pull the creature's snout, trying to figure out the limits of its body. Please stop. I don't taste good. I can assure you of that. The creature shouted, causing the troll to release it, dumbfounded by its words. Well, all right. No need to yell. You seem to be nothing but hair and bones anyway. Not very tasty at all, he said, dismayed over yet another meal slipping through his fingers. The largest being appears to crave ancient knowledge, which I'm guessing I hold within these withering pages. I, I can't even imagine what, well, maybe I just give him the pages. The small creature held out the ancient writings in its hand, awaiting Burger Kungan's reaction. Have you found something of use to me, little creature? He mumbled as he began to rifle through the worn pages. Having been consumed by their contents for quite a while, he suddenly paused, cleared his throat, and read out loud, Egg, Vork, Hoga. of his words rung out. Two large stone plates had moved apart, revealing a large opening in the middle of the cavern. Ah, you have done well, little creature. This might be the place I seek after all. Go down there and tell me what you see. Burger Kungan commanded the small creature, who saw its chance to reunite with its friend. Well, I guess I'm in their good graces, sort of. They need me. I'm the only one who can actually fit down here. <laughs> 